Hello, and welcome to the very first ever episode of the Carnivore Stories podcast with me, Alyssa Grubner. I will be interviewing carnivores from all over who want to share their very own carnivore success stories with the world. For this first episode, in celebration of my carnivorsary, I will be sharing my very own personal carnivore success story. Before I get into my carnivore success story, I was just gonna give you a little bit of background about me and my life leading up to carnivore. So, like I said earlier, my name is Alyssa. I'm 28 years old. Um, I'm from Georgia, born and raised. I'm currently in a city called Stockbridge, Georgia. It's about 30 minutes south of Atlanta. Uh, for the last nine years about, I have been a stay-at-home mom. And most recently, I have started a personal training business. I have two kids. Zoe is eight and Hugh is four. I'm married to my husband, my high school sweetheart. Um, we've been together for 13 years and married for eight of those years. So um, I guess the best thing for me to do is to begin at the beginning, right? Um, so I'll start with my childhood. I was a what you would call a fat kid. Um, I was always overweight from the time I was like six years old. I remember getting one of those Identikid um, ID cards and I was 130 pounds in the first grade. Uh, so that gives you an idea that I definitely had a weight problem. Um, my parents were constantly putting me on diets, trying to get me to lose weight and nothing really nothing really helped um my weight did kind of stabilize by middle school and um so i was still kind of chubby definitely wasn't fit or thin or by any means but my weight had stabilized and then in high school i think it was senior year i got fed up of being chubby and I said, I want to be skinny once and for all. I'm going to be beautiful. Everybody's going to love me. It's going to be great. So how do you lose weight when you are 17 years old and a senior in high school and you don't know anything about nutrition? You starve yourself. That's what I did. I did not eat for days at a time, um, only taking in water. Sometimes I was only drinking soda for my only nutrition. And... Uh, I lost weight. I lost a lot of weight and people noticed and I thought it was awesome. Um, I liked the way I looked. I liked the attention I was getting, but it was extremely healthy. I mean, extremely unhealthy and unsustainable. Um, so senior year passed by and when I graduated, I moved right in with my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, and we pretty much spent a whole year uh, smoking weed and binge eating. Um, so I, all the weight that I had lost starving myself, I gained all of that back and then some uh, in a year. I think um, at my lowest, I had gotten down to like 128 pounds and by the end of that year of me living with my boyfriend and partying all the time, eating whatever we wanted, um, I weighed 190 pounds. And it was around that time that I got pregnant with my daughter. I was 19 years old. Um, and, you know, I, I was just really lost at that time in my life. Um, and during that pregnancy, I couldn't smoke weed anymore, but I could still binge eat. So that's what I did for fun. I literally sat on my butt for nine months and ate. I ate everything. Um, 
And in that nine months, that pregnancy, I gained almost 100 pounds. Uh, so by the time I had given birth to her, to Zoe, I was about 260 pounds. And during that pregnancy, my blood pressure had skyrocketed. It was very high and I had developed gestational diabetes. Um, upon delivering her, giving birth, I, my blood pressure was still really high. I still had all of this weight um, and I had developed chest pains. And so I was only 19 years old when she was born. I turned 20 a few, day, a few days later, but I was very young, high blood pressure chest pains, morbidly obese. And I looked at this baby and I said, you know, she's so precious. She needs a mother in this world. If I don't do something, I'm not going to be around to mother her. You know, I, I, I'm going to have an early death. And so I got to work on losing that weight. Um, I knew I wasn't going to starve myself again because that ended terribly and I realized that was bad for my health at the time um, but I started walking every day and I managed to cut out a lot of processed food and this got the scale moving I think by the time she was about a year old I had dropped down to about 200 pounds so I lost about 60 60 pounds in that year which is really good um, looking back for not really knowing what I was doing and just walking and just trying to eat better, better. Um, when she was about a year old though, I decided, okay, it's time to take things to the next level. And I said, I was gonna try out a plant-based diet. So I was from that point on vegetarian, vegan through periods and I totally drank the green Kool-Aid. <laughs> I mean, I was all in, meat is murder, uh, it's gonna make you die and give you cancer and you know, all this. I thought I was doing the healthiest thing in the world by not eating meat. And through that uh, nutrient deprivation, I was able to drop more weight and I started to run. So by the time Zoe was two, I had lost another 50 pounds and I was down to about 150 pounds. Um, and you know, I thought I had made it. I lost the weight and you know, I've beat obesity. I did what I need to do. Um, and I kind of started to slack off at that point um when so we were we were living with my parents for a little while trying to save up money to get a place of our own and finally we were we had met our goal and it was time to move out we had found this house which was a blessing because um my husband's self-employed and he just didn't have a paper trail. So it was a big challenge for us to find someone who would rent, rent to us without pay stubs. And at the time we operated all in cash. So it was a really blessing to find this place, um, which the landlord ended up selling to us in a couple, a couple years down the road. But anyways, that's off topic. Uh, when we moved in here, it was like I really lost sight of my goals that why I had started. I had started this whole health journey because I wanted to be healthier for my daughter. I started smoking cigarettes again. I started drinking very heavily. I was still vegetarian so I was like okay well I'm vegetarian I'm doing good but I had stopped working out completely um I was staying up really late partying a whole lot not being a good mom um and I guess three or four months of that that we were in here 
doing all that crazy stuff and off track, whatever. I got pregnant with my son. And um, so I got pregnant with him. And I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be the healthiest pregnancy ever. I'm not going to have any of those issues I had with Zoe. It's going to be so much better because I'm vegetarian. And so I went through this whole pregnancy as a vegetarian. I remember asking uh, the doctor I was going to, like, hey, I'm vegetarian. Is there anything I need to be concerned about or anything I need to look out for um, while I'm pregnant, not eating meat? And I remember him just tripping over his words and just kind of be like, um, uh, well, uh, you're eating legumes, right? Uh, like uh, lentils, peanuts, peas. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I eat those. And he's like, okay, yeah, you should be good. <laughs> you know, don't worry about anything. You know, you're, you're eating a healthy diet for you and your baby. And I was like, okay. So that's all I, that's all I ever looked into it. And um, went about my pregnancy and was miserable. I was craving meat the whole time. I like, hoarded these veggie burgers that I found that tasted a lot like the real thing to me. Um, and I was eating those like every day. Um, and I, on top of that, I was eating a lot of ice cream and not a whole lot of veggies that I remember. I mean, obviously I was eating vegetables and lentils because what else are you going to eat when you don't eat meat? Um, oh, I ate a lot of Papa John's pizza, a lot of their veggie delight pizza. And so it was just a, a vegan, vegetarian, junk food pregnancy. And as you can imagine, my health took a absolute nose dive. I, uh, I remember my blood pressure got really high while I was pregnant. Um, I passed my gestational diabetes test. So I was like, yeah, I'm so healthy, vegetarian. But like I said, my blood pressure got really high. I was extremely low uh, in energy, extremely fatigued. I was very depressed. It was just so down in the dumps. I, I just couldn't do much than just lay around all day and be anxious about having to push another baby out. Um, so anyways, fast forward, I get through that pregnancy and I think I gained like 50 pounds during the pregnancy. So I was like 200 pounds at the end of it. And as soon as he was out, I started focusing on trying to lose this weight because I was like, okay, if I can just lose enough weight, my blood pressure will go down. Like I'll have normal blood pressure. And so as soon as I could, I started running. I started eating very little, not enough to support a breastfeeding body. And I lost weight really fast. Um, I think by the time Huey was one, I was like 138 pounds and I was the most unhealthy I've ever been in my life. And this was like, that was, the beginning of my darkest hour, if not my darkest hour. So I remember it was right around his birthday and for a few months, for a few weeks before that, I had been waking up in the middle of the night feeling like someone was stabbing me in my chest. Um, and during this time I had gone vegan um, because no dairy, I was gonna lose even more weight and I was running all these miles every week with a stroller. I'm so sorry, former self, you didn't deserve that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I was just running myself into the ground. I wasn't feeding my body what it needed. I was um, over-exercising and my health was suffering. So yeah, I was having these stabbing chest pains. My blood pressure was skyrocketing. It was like the more weight I lost, the higher my blood pressure got more weight I lost, higher bl bl the blood pressure got. Um, my hair was falling out, things were just going down. And I didn't know why, because I was eating the healthiest diet on earth and I was running and, you know, I had lost all this weight. 
Um, and this one day, it was like, I, I was sure, I was like, surely I'm gonna die. Um, extreme chest pains. My blood pressure was like 210 over like 180. It was something absolutely crazy. Like I, like I said, I thought I was gonna die. So I go to the ER and you know they're looking at me like just so perplexed because i don't look like i should have this issue i looked fit you know i looked fit um but i was really unhealthy they took my blood pressure and it was even higher in the er and i had the chest pains they gave me an ekg they didn't say any they didn't see anything so you know they just chalked it up to stress of course and then um i remember you know this was like the big moment they drew my blood because that's what they do when you're in triage, I guess, you know, they draw everybody's blood. And the phlebotomist was just as freaked out as I was when we saw my blood filling the tube. It was a mauve color. Blood, as you know, should be a dark, deep, rich red. My blood was a milky, light lavender color, light, or no, milky mauve okay if you know what that looks like if not just imagine like if you put like some milk into some grape juice <laughs> and stirred it up that's what it looked like and you know the phlo phlebotomist kind of gasped but didn't want to let on like oh <laughs> what the hell is going on with this lady um but I remember seeing that and just being like, what is going on with me? And just thinking, yeah, I'm dying. There's nothing I can do. I'm already eating the healthiest diet I can. And, you know, they they pretty much just sent me home with a prescription for um, blood pressure medication and iron pills. Go figure. <laughs> um, and so after that point, I was just just feeling so low. So it was so demoralizing because I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to do. And here I was, pretty sure I was about to die. So I'm writing letters to my kids. I'm, you know, preparing as if, okay, I can go any moment. There's nothing I can do. Doctors aren't gonna help me. Uh, the blood pressure medication was not working to lower my blood pressure and the chest pains were still going strong. Um, on a side note, I later found out that the milky color of my blood is more than likely because of high triglycerides because that was something that came up that my triglycerides were through the roof. I had the most crazy cholesterol panel, panel you could have seen. The triglycerides were super high, HDL super, super low, and LDL just kind of somewhere in the middle, but I, I do remember that. And um, that milky color was because of triglycerides in the blood. Anyways, I thought I was gonna die. And then one day I got this crazy idea that I should just well, it wasn't that crazy. Honestly, looking back, my thought pattern was, I should just eat meat. I should just start eating meat and eggs and cheese again because I don't wanna die and then people blame it on the vegan diet. I don't want people thinking plant-based is unhealthy. So I'm just gonna eat meat. So at least when I die, they're gonna say, oh, well, she started eating meat again. That's why she died. And <laughs> I can laugh about it now, but like back then I was like serious. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna eat some meat. So nobody's blaming my death, my bad health on how I had been eating for the last three years. Um, but anyways, I remember what I had. It was a egg and cheese uh, grilled cheese with some spinach with like uh, and with like some Dave's killer bread and I toasted it up real nice fried egg melty cheese spinach and I took a bite and it was the most glorious feeling it is the best I had felt in at least the last last year or so and it was like immediately, immediately, my body was like, yeah, 
yes. <laughs> Eggs, cheese, like immediately hitting my mouth. My body knew it was getting something that it was missing, that it needed. Um, and for the first time in a long time after eating that sandwich, my blood pressure did lower, okay? It, when before I wasn't able to lower it with medication, with losing weight, meditation, yoga, nothing. Eating this sandwich, it calmed me to a point that my blood pressure actually went down immediately after eating the sandwich. It still wasn't in the normal range, but it did get to like around 130 over like 85. And it stayed like that um, for a while when I started back eating eggs. And then after that I had salmon and I finally had some beef. Um, and I was still only having meat like once, once a week uh, because I was like, well, I still wanna be healthy. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of meat. You know, because I'm thinking, I, it still didn't click yet that, oh, hello, dummy, not eating meat was really bad for you. That's why you're feeling better now that you're having some meat. Um, anyways, I, after that, I wish I would have just went full on carnivore at that point, but no, I didn't. I spent another year in purgatory another year or so in purgatory yeah and this was me kind of so I started lifting weights seriously at this time and trying to get in more protein um and trying trying to build muscle um but it wasn't it wasn't really working out too well I I still was feeling like crap a lot of times and my blood pressure was still not in the normal range um and I still had some weight that I you know I, I was still in the mindset if I can just lose enough weight my blood pressure will finally normalize and I'll be fine problem solved if I can just lose enough weight so uh some time went by and I think it was August of 2019. I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna knit this in the butt, whatever I have to do to lose this weight so my blood pressure will normalize, I'm gonna do it. Um, and I went, I started calorie counting. I was counting every little thing I was putting in my mouth. I think I was eating like 15, 1600 calories a day with like 75 grams of protein and I was lifting weights four times a week. I was running two times a week, jump roping, doing HIIT. Um, pretty much I was working out three hours a day, every day, six days a week. Sunday was my rest day where I only did an hour of HIIT cardio. And yeah, I lost weight. I lost a lot of weight um, in about a six month uh, time frame and I had reached my goal weight where I had wanted to be um, and then my blood pressure started going crazy again and I started getting chest pains again and I just started shutting down I remember uh, going on a walk this one day and um, and I turned the corner I wasn't far from my house at all and I just I just got this overwhelming feeling to just lay down, just lay down right there in the middle of the road because I was so tired, absolutely tired. And I was also in college at this time and the pandemic was just starting. This was, this was like early 2020 and it was just, everything was hitting me at once. And, um, and I just couldn't. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. This is 100% not sustainable. And I remember going to bed that night and just saying to myself, okay, body, what do you want? What do you need? And what popped into my head was more food, less exercise. And so I, and that's what I started doing. I started saying, okay, I'm gonna feed myself more food and doing less exercise but i didn't want to totally go off the rails just yet because i was supposed to be going to a wedding in like a month and i still wanted to fit into the dress that i had bought for the wedding 
crazy, right? Anyways, like I said, it was the beginning of the pandemic and everything ended up getting shut down anyway, so I didn't go to the wedding. Um, but fast forward um, to later that spring after we got back from the beach, because I, I remember wanting to not go crazy yet with gaining weight and giving my body a break until we got back to the beach. So I want to look decent in my swimsuit. Um, I started to really get into the intuitive eating movement, okay? This was the summer of 2020 and the intuitive eating movement, what I was gaining from it was that you're supposed to eat the standard American diet and you're supposed to eat all the food you want. Um, it is your, it was my ticket to binge on anything and everything I wanted. And I thought that this was going to solve all my, all my problems. Okay, so I remember at the time I was really inspired by Stephanie Buttermore, if any of you know who that is. And she's on YouTube and she was going through a similar journey at the same time. She called it her all in intuitive eating thing. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going all in too. I've deprived myself too, and I need to eat everything too. And this majorly backfired on me. I remember at first it being a big relief that I wasn't counting any calories. I wasn't even, I wasn't thinking about what I was putting in my mouth. I was just eating based, uh, based off of what sounded good, what I thought would taste good. Um, and the idea is that eventually your appetite corrects and you're a normal eater. And I was wanting to get to this normal eating place. And uh, I was eating every, anything and everything, Ben and Jerry's, Pop-Tarts, bagels. It was, it was all garbage, okay? It was very rare that I would... Um, save space in my stomach to have some nutritious foods, uh, any meat or vegetables, just regular food. It was all junk. So during the summer of 2020, I think at the beginning of the summer, I was like 150 pounds. At the end of the summer of 2020, so June, July, by the beginning of, or it wasn't the end of the summer, but by the beginning of August, I had gained 35 pounds, 35 pounds. Um, and my chest pains were still there. Actually, they were stronger. And I had completely stopped exercising, completely stopped working out. All I was doing was laying in bed, watching Handmaid's Tale and eating junk all summer long. Um, I felt terrible, terrible fatigue. All of my health issues, they were all exasperated from doing this standard American diet, intuitive eating. Um, and I, I remember, um, you know, I was watching a lot of TV, just in bed eating all the time. And I was on YouTube one day and I, um, came across a video that was called vegan deterioration. I was like, what? Veganism bad for people? What? So I clicked on the video and saw all of these people. It's by Sparage, by the way. All these people that did just what, you know, the, or no, it wasn't vegan deterioration. It was vegan, the epitome of malnourishment. And I was like, wait, what? Malnourishment from veganism? And you know, there's not nutrients. And I watched this and saw all these people like so obviously unhealthy, so obviously knocking on death's door. And I was very intrigued. And I started watching more videos on Sparage's channel, interviews with him, with him interviewing ex-vegans and hearing their stories and this was the first time it ever occurred to me that, you know, I had, that veganism, vegetarianism was bad for me, that I was lacking in a very big way, the nutrients the, that are coming from meat. 
And um, on one of these ex-vegan interviews, there was a guy that was a runner and he was vegan and um, being vegan and being a runner, he had developed diabetes and hypertension. And I was just like, what? Like this happens to people? And, and he had fixed this by going on a carnivore diet. So this is my first time hearing about a carnivore diet and, his, and him going on a carnivore diet had completely reversed his type two diabetes and completely reversed his hypertension. And I really started thinking seriously at this point, cause I was like, I gotta do something. I can't just keep gaining weight and you know, I like, thinking my appetite was going to regulate and all of a sudden I'm just going to lose all this excess weight and not have high blood pressure and not have chest pains and not have, you know, all these other things that being carnivore has healed. Um, and I realized I need to make a change, but I was really afraid of carnivore because I was like, man, that sounds really restrictive. And I just came from you know, restricting myself to the point that I just binged for like three months straight and put on this weight. I don't think I want to do that. But I did really start to delve into the low carb world. I started watching all of the low carb down under videos on YouTube. And um, from there, I found the low carb MD podcast. From there, I found Nina, Nina Teicholt's book, um, the big fat surprise and i found the obesity code um what else did i find nutrition and, f and physical degeneration i just started reading and just completely diving deep into everything i could learn about how eliminating lowering eliminating carbs fasting benefits human physiology and I started to apply these concepts and really start to see some changes so I went low carb first my blood pressure got better all my symptoms got better then I started to do some intermittent fasting again more improvement then I did keto again more improvement and all of this was in the span of like so the end of 2020 from August 2020 until let's see like May 2021 I'm doing low carb then some intermittent fasting and keto um but at this at that point in like May I was not impatient, but I felt like things could be improving more. And carnivore had stayed in the back of my mind all this time. And by this point, I had learned enough about saturated fat and about meat and all that good stuff to, to feel comfortable that carnivore probably isn't killing people, that it's good for people. And I, I was still, I still did have elevated blood pressure and some lingering um, symptoms, health, health symptoms. And so I remember June, this month, a year ago, I was on my way to pick up my kids from, from uh, North Carolina, from grandma's house. They had spent a week there and I was driving by myself. It's about a six, seven hour drive. And on that trip, all I did the entire time was back to back to back to back. I listened to all of the carnivore success stories on the Meet Our Eggs, formerly Meet Our Eggs, Rivero podcast. And after each one, it's like I gained another percent of like confidence to finally try carnivore um and i and i had really been thinking seriously about it for for a while but i kept saying well i'm already so low carb i'm only having chocolate and macadamia nuts and coconut and veggies sometimes i don't know 
what it, what removing these things are really going to do for me. It's probably just a matter of time before my blood pressure totally normalizes and all these other things get better. But after listening to all these success stories, by the time I had drove from Georgia to North Carolina, I got out the car at, the, at my mom's house and I was like, that's it. I'm carnivore now. I'm trying the carnivore. So that was the first day. It was June 20th, 2021. I said, I'm going to try it out for a month and see what happens. Three weeks in the carnivore, I got my first 100% normal, perfect blood pressure reading. I remember it was 117 over 74 and I was like, what? I remember I, I took my blood pressure like 10 times that day just in disbelief that, wait, for real, three weeks carnivore, and I don't, I don't, my my blood pressure is normalized. Maybe this is a fluke. Um, maybe it's gonna come back, but it stayed normal. I like for the first three months carnival, I, carnivore, I took my blood pressure every day because I just, I was so elated. Part of it was to see the numbers show up on the blood pressure monitor and be like, oh my god. Um, but that was the biggest thing. After that, when that happened at three weeks in, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna stick with this beyond the month and keep seeing how it goes. Around the same time as the blood pressure normalizing, I noticed that my fasting blood sugar normalized too. I remember like six months into low carb keto, I had first started monitoring my fasting blood sugar and it was still over a hundred, like a hundred in the, 100, 110, 115 sometimes, um, but my blood sugar normalized. It was always within like the mid to low 70s to mid to low 80s, fasting blood sugar. Um, and my, I remember my mood just like picking up, like all of a sudden I had this newfound self-confidence uh, and I didn't, I wasn't losing weight, okay? It wasn't like I was like, or maybe I was losing weight. I I broke up with a scale a long time ago. I do weigh myself now, but just because I've detached the feeling from the scale and I'm just curious, like what does my weight do from day to day? Which being on carnivore, my weight is extremely steady from day to day. It used to fluctuate as much as 10 pounds. It's always within one or two pounds from day to day um, as a carnivore, but um, but yeah, that, that was all within the first month, the blood pressure and the blood sugar and the mood. Um, and from, from there on out, I just, it's been smooth sailing pretty much. And I love it. I'm so happy I gave it a chance. Um, I, I feel like I'm a carnivore for life. This has given me my life back. Um, the last year being carnivore, it's like the first year of life I've ever lived. Sorry, I'm back. My camera died in the middle of this. But I was saying that it's like every other year in my life, I was never alive until now. And I shudder to think if I had went on living my whole entire life that way and, and never knowing life like how I know it now. Carnivore has really, um, has really saved me, okay? And I mean, there's, there's so much in my life that it's done beyond the blood pressure, beyond the blood sugar. Um, I also, I have a list of things I wanted to tell you about. I have, I've had very painful varicose veins um, in the past. And now those varicose veins, they don't hurt at all. And the appearance of them has decreased a lot. Um, and so I'm hopeful that in the next few years here, they will diminish 100%. So that would be really cool to see. Um, no more chest pain no more unexplained chest pain whatever was going on in here carnivore has healed that um 
I don't get any more UTIs. So from the time I was a little, little girl, three or four years old, I got six to 12 UTIs a year. I have not had one since being carnivore. Um, PMS, no more PMS, no more period cramps. Um, I have a light, very regular period. It used to be a very heavy flow, very irregular. Um, the mental clarity. I have unlocked potential, okay? It's um, what I'm capable of now. I never knew I was someone who could be um, very productive. I have so much productivity, um, so much, it's, it's everything is just unlocked. Um, I feel like I can do anything, anything I dream of now. I can, I can do it. I have the capacity. Um, my mood, my mood is very steady, always jovial. If there's a problem, it's not a problem. You know, it's, I get through it. You know, I'm, I'm just really loving life, you know, just for everything it is, the good and the bad. Uh, I used to have really bad anxiety, really bad, especially social anxiety. Um, and that's not a thing. That's just not something I deal with. No anxiety, no depression. Um, my hair used to fall out a lot. I would have excessive shedding. That's not something I'm dealing with now. I am sprouting new hair. So hopefully next few years here, I'll have even thicker hair. And um, let's see, increased energy. I am unstoppable from the time I get up in the morning. I do everything I need to do, going to the gym. Um, you know, I'm I'm giving it my all. I, I have no, there's no fatigue. There's no like, it's just go. I have go. <laughs> um, deep restorative sleep. I I sleep like a log now, and and that's not something that was a thing before. I used to wake up all throughout the night. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to get back to sleep. Um, and then I have a better marriage and a better home life their family life you know we're just one big happy heavy meat eating family and it's it's the most beautiful thing to me right now and I love it um but uh honestly this list it can go on like we could be here all night and I could be telling you all about it telling you how great carnivore the carnivore way of eating is because it is I love it and I just I want to tell it to the world um, if there's anybody anywhere dealing with anything that you know is just just not working for them like anything if there's anything wrong try carnivore just see just see what it what it can do for you this is my own you know, it equals one story and yours will be totally unique. And um, that's, I think that's really the beauty of it that everybody's got these unique stories, but they're all, they're all so, so impressive. They, it's like people, people's lives are being changed in a million different ways and, and it's all amazing. Am I strict carnivore? Uh, it depends on what you classify as strict. So at the moment, I'm eating meat, like all meat, anything that lived. So that's pork, chicken, beef, fish, seafood. And I'm having cheese occasionally and kefir on a regular basis, raw milk kefir that I home make. Um, and that's it, water, salt. and. I'm not having eggs right now because I think I might have some issues with the egg whites, but um, I don't do any fruit or honey or anything like that. My favorite carnivore food at the moment is pork belly. I don't know 
why, but I just can't get enough. There's something in pork belly that my body really likes right now. Typically, I have two meals a day. One of those meals is after I get home from the gym and I'll usually have like a pound of meat and that'll a lot of times, or lately it's been like three um, quarter pound beef patties and then um, like half a pound of pork belly, quarter pound, half a pound of pork belly fried up in a pan. And then I'm having chicken stock. That's what I'm having lately for my first meal. And then second um, meal, second meal, usually I'm having about another pound of meat at dinner time. And like I said, it can be beef, chicken, pork, fish, whatever, whatever I'm making that night. So adaptation. I didn't have any like keto flu or electrolyte issues or anything like that. Um, and I think that's because I gradually arrived upon carnivore. Like I said, I started from low carb to keto to carnivore. Um, so it wasn't like a big shock to my system, but I did have some issues with my bowels. Uh, you would think without fiber, I would have been constipated, but no, it was the complete opposite. It was about three months of very, very loose stools. And, um, you know, going through that was difficult, but at the same time, I was like, well, you know, Everything else is so great. I guess if I just got loose stools for the rest of my life, I can deal with that <laughs> as long as I get to keep all the other benefits. But luckily that worked itself out in time and that's not an issue for me anymore. But yeah, that's it. I thank you so much for listening to this, watching it, if, it's, if you're on YouTube. And um, if you have any comments, questions for me, you can find me on Instagram at meet Mrs. Grubbs. That's M-E-A-T, Mrs. M-R-S, Grubbs, G-R-U-B-S. And uh, I'd love to hear from you, especially if you have a carnivore story of your own you'd like to tell uh, and come and be on the podcast. Let me interview you. I think it'd be a lot of fun. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay meaty, stay beautiful, stay strong. And bye. <laughs>